when we were thinking about mini-C, again, we were thinking about uh, how does this relate to learning? And we realized that whenever somebody learns something new and it's personally meaningful, kind of a deep, meaningful learning, that's an act of creativity. And we also recognize that that kind of mini-C act of creativity that happens in the learning process is probably also what's happening in larger manifestations of creativity where external um, evaluators or eyes are saying that's a creative behavior, that's a creative product. So that's where mini-C starts. It's kind of the subjective experience of creativity. It's the kind of self-awareness that this is new and meaningful to me. And then it moves into sometimes an articulation that others can recognize as creative. And that would be little c. And what's interesting is that the traditional definition of creativity is that it has to be novel or new and task appropriate. And yet with mini-C, we're kind of breaking these rules in that somebody else may not see it as new, but as long as it's new to that person. Whereas at the little c level or everyday creativity, other people recognize it as being new. And we sometimes like to call it county fair creativity, in, in part because we developed a lot of the model during the Oregon County Fair. But this idea of that bit of creative work that everybody can bring to the table in some way that people can appreciate, can enjoy, whether it's cooking or building a birdhouse or scrapbooking or singing a song on your guitar, it's that level of everyday creativity that is recognized as being creative by at least some other people. Right, and I think, you know, just to dwell on mini C, little C, just for another moment, what I think was evident to us as we were thinking about this and observing creative expression, like at the, at the fair, for example, is the idea that, you know, mini C creativity is sufficient. It's a sufficient level of creativity. As long as the person's enjoying their experience, it, sometimes, it doesn't even matter sometimes if other people don't recognize that, that moment of learning or that moment of insight. It still has value in itself. Um, and what we started looking at, for example, in some of our recent studies, is the case that some people might recognize their creativity, other people don't. And what we're also seeing in kids, for example, is kids often don't recognize their creativity, but other people do. So I think there's some interesting things of helping youngsters realize that what they're doing is a creative act and that with some support it could be developed in something that other people could recognize. So that maybe moves us to pro C then. And once you're at little c, so once your work is recognized by other people, in essence you have that decision of whether to keep working at it, to keep practicing developing your art you know, or wh whatever the product is, maybe working with people who are professionals and experts, and that over time, over practice, your work will reach that level of being an expert, of being professional. And to a degree, this is the most that we can really realistically aspire for that's under our control. It is under our control how much we practice, how much we try. The jump from pro C to big C or genius, that's what happens with history. That's what happens in the generations after us. And we can't necessarily control that. There are things that back in 1850, somebody would have been sure, wow, this author will be remembered 150 years later, and nobody has any idea who they are. But pro C is something that is within our control and, and with appropriate practice. Um, repeated efforts, continual production, we can really strive for. Absolutely. And I think we think it's valuable, if we're thinking about creativity as a developmental trajectory, to have those examples of eminent creativity. Those are very inspirational. They show the, the heights of human accomplishment. And again, it's out of the creator's hands in, in most cases. So I think when we're thinking about cultivating creativity in, in young people, for example, giving them many opportunities to explore creativity at the little c level, and then helping them understand if there's one particular interest or area of aspiration that they feel really inclined to pursue, how much it takes, what kind of work it takes to go from your interest and your expression of it at this level to actually become an accomplished professional creator. And so that's where bringing in accomplished creators can serve as important models. Um, and that can really help cultivate that 
that creative trajectory. But again, even at the little C level, I, I would call myself a little C cook. Some people might call me a mini C cook, um, but that's sufficient. I find joy out of that. People are happy eating my food typically. And so it's not something that I'm going to go on to culinary school, but it's a lifelong form of creative expression and, and is fine in and of itself. It doesn't have to go to the next level. And I think it's worth mentioning that your level of C will vary by domain, by endeavor, and that you may have somebody who's at the pro C level of teaching or of psychology research or, or of art, and when they try something else, they may be mini C, they may be little C. It is rare to have somebody at that polymath level who is pro C at many different areas. It happens, of course, but it's rare. But you'll have a lot of people who, who might have this whole spread of their pro C in this and their little C in these 10 things and their mini C in f these 40 things. I mean, I love singing in the shower, but I wouldn't sing probably even in front of other people. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. From this model, we have developed a number of ideas and, and theories such as our idea of creative metacognition or the idea that the way that you can get from mini C to little c is by teaching and working with children or adults to be accurate in how they can figure out whether they're creative, where they are best creative, and when to be creative. And so we're, we've begun doing a number of studies looking at this, particularly how accurate are people at assessing their own creativity? Does it matter by domain or age? I think the next step is then also seeing, can we train that? Can we teach it? Can we improve it? With the belief that this will help creative development. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of our hopes also is, you know, the idea that this model can both have applied and theoretical and empirical components to it. So, in other words, I think it's helpful, um, we hope this model is helpful in communicating the reality of creativity, but also democratizing creativity. So realizing that, you know, creativity is a human and non-human trait that can be um, widespread through a variety of domains. But realistically, you could probably only pursue accomplished creativity in, in a few domains, just because of the amount of time and training that it would take. But that doesn't mean you can't be creative in everyday life. So trying to help people understand what might creativity mean for their particular context, be that in the kitchen or be that in a classroom. And then for researchers to try to situate the, the body of work that's done and place that within this framework. And as we're doing this work and I'm doing the more applied and empirical and theoretical work, we're realizing that we need to expand and, and put some more nuance in the model. So that's kind of what we've been thinking. It's, it's kind of propelled us by sharing the model out and getting good feedback on the model. What kinds of things do we need to further clarify and expand in the model? One of my pet peeves is when people say, oh, I'm not creative. And I, I think that a recurrent theme in a lot of my work, whether it's the idea of mini C and the 4C model, or whether it's the idea of the replication level in the, in the propulsion model, or whether it's the work I've been doing with my wife about animal creativity, is that the lowest levels of creativity, so to speak, are still creative, they're still valuable. This to me is related to a lot of the work I've done on creativity across domains where again, people assume creativity has to be in the arts and that, oh, I'm not creative because I can't draw, because I can't write, because I can't um, sing. And yet these same people can train their animal or cook or do mathematical equations or any of, or any of this stuff or teach. And they can do it in a very creative way. Yeah, and I think the, the one kind of other point that this brings up to me is not only helping people recognize the creativity that they, that they have and that their students can have, um, but also I think with that recognition is the responsibility. Now that you know that creativity is possible in any of these contexts, then why are we not doing it? What can we do to bring more creativity into the space or to recognize the creativity that's already there? So I think it also um, comes with that responsibility of why aren't we living more creatively? Why aren't we teaching more creatively? Why aren't we recognizing the creative expression that happens when a youngster shares an idea in a classroom? So I think that's what um, we're hoping to accomplish is both the awareness and responsibility 
to um, engage in life more creatively. I also think it, the 4C conception can be applied to a lot of these bigger issues in creativity. Um, one example is, is creativity and mental illness related? This is a very controversial topic, and I'm not particularly wanting to wade into it now, but it's a very different question if you're asking, is mental illness and creativity, are they related at the big C level versus are they related at the mini C level? At the big C level, you have a number of studies that say they are, and you can critique those studies, discuss it, and there are legitimate and valid critiques that show these studies are flawed, but it's a certain kind of debate. At the mini C level, there's no evidence. There's no reason to think creativity and mental illness is related. And if anything, creativity at the mini C level is associated with many positive and wonderful health outcomes. And this is just an example of how we approach some of these hot topics in creativity. And by looking through this 4C lens, we can look, well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. This applies to assessment. It applies to things like how creativity is related to motivation or personality. These are all the kinds of questions that I think would benefit from keeping the four C's or just the idea of radiated creati creativity in mind. Yeah, I think it just serves as a context to really provide the context and, and help clarify what, what, are, what level of creativity are we talking about with this particular issue.